greetings and uh, welcome to my new set of videos that I'm now doing for the Daduk. Now, I'm guessing most of you know what this instrument is by now, if you've come across these videos, and more than most likely you have seen my earlier uh, videos, which were kind of produced on a whim, um, just kind of off the cuff. And um, I'll be honest, when I did them, I didn't really expect them to be as popular as they were. Um, obviously very thankful that they were as well received as they were, so I felt inclined to do a uh, follow-up. Um, which would be a little bit more kind of in depth maybe now that I've been playing a lot longer and maybe be a little bit more valuable to you as the uh, student. Okay, so one of the principal aspects that people generally tend to skip over when studying um, the Daduk um, is just the kind of the, the essence of sound which comes from your breath and controlling that to essentially control your phrasing and that that might sound you know sounds kind of overly complicated when you when I put it like that but the, the concept is fairly simple you just you're developing to control your breath and be as relaxed as possible and using it to create different colors from the instruments okay um, generally some people refer to these things as timbre and, and dynamics because these two things can really affect the sound of an instrument. It's like on a piano, if I play very softly and if I play very hard, um, not only is the volume obviously affected, but the actual timbre, the, the, the sound quality, it goes from a very soft, round, mellow, um, warm, deep sound to a much more kind of sharper, shriller, kind of, you know, more static kind of sound with a little less of that roundness. And it's the same thing for the Daduk. So generally what I'm talking about when I talk about these things is, when it relates to the Duke, is um, generally as a beginner you will always tend to try and really blow really hard and exhale very strongly into the instrument and that's, that's a given, that's expected and you will be doing that just to develop control and strength in your muscles. But at some point you need to kind of back off a bit and actually learn to a bit more softer and get a slightly more rounder, less shrill sound out of the instrument. So by that, you know, when I'm blowing very hard, you know, I'm getting a very sharp kind of edgy kind of sound. Whereas if I blow softly, you know, I'm getting a much more mellow, rounded sound and obviously this depends on your read you might get a slightly more breathier sound as well which is not a undesirable quality in regards to the duke just so you know so one of the kind of main exercises that i will do um or i should say i used to do quite a lot of i don't really do that much of it now but when i was trying to develop these principles um was to basically just take a long drawn out note and to kind of just hold on to it as much as possible and to keep it as steady as possible. So by that I mean doing this. such a good exercise um, because you generally tend to, have, tend to have a tendency to um, when you start to get on the lower reserve of oxygen in your lungs you tend to tense up a bit more which you know that extra tension can affect your pitch control you can might find that you're raising the pitch slightly sharp because you're kind of clenching and tensing up more and that's an undesirable quality to have and more importantly um, it's something you have to get used to it to do because you can't really use only half your air reserve You do actually have to get used to the fact that you're going to be playing till there's only just a hair of breath left before you stop and then take another uh, deep breath and continue playing um, So I did that on the lowest note which in this case is the F sharp But I generally you know when I first started doing these exercises because that low note is quite difficult um, I would generally tend to do it on one of the higher notes 
um, you know, for example, maybe like the um, the F sharp. Generally, I could keep these notes going a bit longer, but as you can see, I'm, I'm having to slouch a little bit to do these videos. I can't really, because of the backboard and whatnot, I can't really actually sit in a proper posture. And more importantly, this is not really about me and how long I can hold a note. It's more about the exercise itself. Okay. Um, one of the important aspects that goes along with this um, as well is just basically um, note control. And by note control, I mean just kind of being able to put emphasis on notes because um, on other woodwind instruments, the tongue tends to kind of come into play to help define phrases and, and certain notes to help them kind of pop out a bit more in a phrase. Um, whereas on the Duke, people obviously generally don't. There are instances where you do use the tongue, but that's kind of the more advanced fusion -y kind of players. Generally, the tongue's not used. And... Um, the kind of the accent or the accent, however you wish to pronounce it, depending on your region, um, comes more from the exhalation of breath. Uh, and that's kind of a, a very common thing that a lot of people don't practice enough and skip over. I'm certainly guilty of that. So by that I mean just kind of playing phrases meandering up and down. You know, that's a very kind of legato kind of phrase, whereas you want to just for one note to begin with, just kind of work on going. You know, and what I'm doing there is basically just releasing the kind of pressure slightly and just reducing my air, air pressure ever so slightly as well and just kind of disengaging the note, re-engaging the note, disengaging the note, re-engaging the note. And um, I wouldn't really use that technique in a, a phrase ascending or descending, really, because it sounds kind of weird going. You know, when you do that, it sounds like one of those kind of artificial sample to do, because it doesn't really sound like a real to do. A real to do player wouldn't do that. You would, however, do it if you had a repeating note in a phrase to help emphasize the fact that the phrase is now ended and a new phrase is beginning. So by that, I mean going. Thank mm -hmm. you. 